here's lesson request number two. Uh, this will be about two and three octave scales, including the chromatic scale. And then an overlooked concept about scales on the guitar. Modes, scales and modes on the guitar. So for two octave scales, uh, that's fairly simple on the guitar because you can do two octaves in most positions. Uh, most common for a C major scale would be but just now that I'm thinking about it of course you can do different numbers of notes per string so when you stay strictly in position it's more or less a mixture of two and three notes per string but if you try to restrict yourself to a specific number all the way through you can get some really neat things going on and this is actually from an Oz Noy instructional video that you can get on mymusicmasterclass.com uh, two note per string scales <laughs> should I do that when well, I can just do that? It's all about phrasing and sequences. So if you do the major scale like that, you can do your typical pentatonic t -t type uh, sequences. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Three note per string, as we all know. Goes a little more diagonal. Four note per string, this is kind of tough. And that's actually a way that you can, you know, do more than three octaves. Actually, you go three octaves plus a third interval. It's kind of neat. I think I've come across someone who referred to that particular version of the major scale as a, a violin scale, I guess because in the violin you're doing four notes per string most of the time while staying in position. Uh, so that's that, and th that can be done with any seven note scale, like melodic minor, the jazz melodic minor that is, not the common practice period, classical, traditional, melodic minor, whatever you want to call it which is the jazz melodic minor, the modern melodic minor, or what we most often refer to today as just the melodic minor. Goes up the same way it comes down. Or goes down the same way it comes up. So that's the idea behind two octave scales and a little bit of three and a half octave. But now specifically for three octave, I've come up with some patterns where you mix three note per strings with four note per strings. So if you do A major, four note per string, three, then what's cool is that same shape repeats. And then you got a get that last note by doing four notes again or sliding slowly so that's that idea and I've never really tried, let's see, if you do flip it the other way, do three and then four. Just a little more awkward. I think uh, doing the three then four is probably works better. And of course, you know, for three octaves, you can, you're only limited to your imagination, basically. You can try to go strictly up in one position and then fill out the rest. There was one I used to do. Um, what was that? 
Uh, I don't know, it was, uh, I can't remember what, what it was, but I finished it off with it. So. Yeah, it was four and then threes and then something, I don't know, anyway, but the point there is you can make up your own three octave uh, patterns. Uh, then the chromatic scale in two octaves while staying in position, that's a matter of sliding. ascending, you slide with the first finger, while descending, do the fourth finger. It's kind of tricky, but it's kind of cool when you get it down. per string. Um, let's see, so four notes per string, that's very common. And then you can descend the next position up. It's all together. sequences and just kind of rips through it. I haven't practiced that in a long time. Then the concept about modes and positions. Um, every time I teach this I'm very surprised um, I'm very surprised at the surprise that you can do this. So if you're in C major <laughs> scales, um, but six note scales, those are kind of neat, like if you do the whole tone scale, two whole steps and then move up a tritone each time, one day I'm going to be able to pick all that. fast. 
but um, well, a cool thing you can do with the whole tone scale. So if someone was using the whole tone scale earlier in the group. But actually, if you try to stay in position and skip strings, you get... Paul Gilbert pattern. It's hard to let go of that stuff. So that makes a uh, two octave. So we got A, B, C sharp, G, A, B. We almost have the entire scale, I think. It's just the E flat note that's missing. Of course, if you do it up a whole step, then do it on the other strings. stuff um, that I don't try to avoid it's just I got so many ideas that move on to new things you know but now that I'm reminded of that one I'm probably gonna use it for something but uh, one of my new whole tone licks involves the use of the generic modality concept I think that's what it's called it's that Tim Miller Mick Goodrick concept where you derive tone rows from a scale and divide it up into different three note configurations. But the one for whole tone that I like to use a lot is. And to make a line out of that. I use that a lot just to fit it in some cool places like in uh, I'll Catch You by John Schofield. Cool stuff. So I hope that helps with the scale ideas and practicing scales. Obviously, practice all your scales in every key, in every position, in every configuration. Spell them out on paper. Work out the modes. Work out the scale harmonizations. Not only as chords, but as arpeggios. And that's a lot of work to do, but it's very helpful. See y'all later. <laughs>